happy. That's what all nations going to come up to, to see us. Amen. We the happy couple. We the loving couple. And everybody in the earth, if they don't come up to the house of God, they're going to be cursed. And the glory on us, the kind of love we got between us, we don't need no lights. We're going to shine in the temple of God. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting. Because for seven years, we're going to go and consummate this thing. You ready? Let's party like it's 1999. We go for seven years. He's going to take his church for seven years. Yes. And everybody else is going to be like that one over there. <laughs> I used to know him. Seven years he goes to be with his bride. They consummate. Marriage supper of the Lamb. Others that are like this. While the rest stay down here on earth. Suffer tribulation. You can be a part of the bride. All you got to do. Is make a choice. I choose. Thank you, dear. I choose. I choose the fruit of the Lord. Amen. Then he turns it all over. He turns it over to the Father. He turns it over to the Father. And the Father and the Son. But the Father has given his glory to the Son. And so that's why the Father says, if you don't believe in my Son, I ain't got nothing to do with you. And the Father says, if you dare try to get in this holy place and you ain't got the blood that's on my son on you, I will destroy you. You go into the lake of fire. I don't care who you are. You got to have his blood to get into this wedding. Like you stamp you in the club, you got to be stamped with the blood of Jesus on you. Now, you can take your time and live your little less than 100 years playing with old Slewfoot if you want to and think you're going to get in before he come. But when he come, it's going to be so suddenly. Somebody going to be left. One should be left and one going to be taken. <laughs> this ain't no joke. We laughing, but it's true. This is one of the greatest truths that we have. That's why we got to get past that he's on the cross and died for my sin. He ain't died no more on the cross. He's sitting up in glory. He's sitting up in glory with the Father. Looking at you and praying for you. Not hating you, but loving you. Trying to say, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, help them to hurry up and close that deal. Help them to hurry up and get their foot out of that. Help them to hurry because it's the Father. Raise your right hand. It's the Father that's going to determine when he go get his bride. So Jesus, in the meantime, here you go, hold that. He's subject to his Father. Pray for, oh, God. Oh, help him, Jesus. Help her. Help her. It's been too long. He got a ministry. She got a ministry. But they've sacrificed it for old Slewfoot over there. But, Lord, hey, I'm praying for him. I want to come and get my bride. But you're the only one that can tell me when to go. And when the Father drops his hand... That's why Jesus said, don't nobody know but my father. And that's when he goes and get his bride. In the meantime, this, cross you, this Christ you keeping on the cross, sitting like this preacher, praying for you, calling your name. Saying, why don't you quit being so rebellious and so stubborn? You got to have it your way. Why you quit believing the lie, being distracted? You got to have it your way. I gave you your beauty for my glory. Don't let the enemy take it from you. Because when he get done with you, you ain't going to look as pretty and pure. I gave you your power to run and jump and, and to, to, to dunk and all of that. Don't let the enemy get you all your life trying to get million dollar contracts. Use it to help me. Set up tents. Go out in the street and witness. Run through the neighborhood when they're chasing you because you, you, you carrying my name and you can jump over a fence and keep running. Don't give it all to the NBA, the NFL. I the one gave you what you got. Your intellect, your superior way that you can create. Where you think you got that from? He don't give nothing original. I only come from my father. You got to make a decision. Amen. 
Stand on your feet. Stay right here with me, preachers. God love you. He love you enough to make this man scream. I ain't mad at you. Come on out here, Pastor. I ain't mad at you. Come on up here, minister. Come on up here. Come on, stand up here. I just trying to tell you it's later than you think. Hold me tight. He got he got a hold on me. He had a hold on me in my lifetime. But you should know the truth. And the truth, when I hear that truth, then I start saying, you can't hold me. I've been washed with the blood. Dad, get back, man. You're going to get knocked out. I've been washed with the blood. Player, get off of me. I've been washed with the blood. Look out now, man. I told you, get off of me. You think I'm playing? I'm going to knock you out right here in the church, devil. He think, he think, he think I'm acting now. I'm going to knock him smooth out on Sunday morning. <laughs> That's what y'all need to do. <laughs> Instead of wearing him in here, <laughs> get him off you. If y'all up there fighting in the pew, we ain't gonna bother you. Just get him. Yeah. I'm gonna look. See, I know what they're doing. We ain't gonna bother you. We're gonna let you finish. Yeah. If he get on top of you, we coming. But yo, if you got to, cause you brought him in here, he didn't know I'm finna knock him smooth out, boy. <laughs> but look, let's make a decision today. Anyone here? that haven't received Christ as your personal Savior, you're not sure about it. Anyone that may be, you know, in the process of eating from the tree of life, you, you, you make your mistakes or you fall into sin and you eat from the tree of death, the tree of evil. We're not here to judge you. But let's make a decision today. Let's not glorify the wood Let's not even glorify the blood if we ain't going to use it. It become a ritual, man. People all over the world doing stuff. Some piercing themselves, cutting themselves. Just Google it. They got people in parades going down, they're crucified on cross trying to imitate Christ. But it doesn't mean nothing if you ain't going to apply the application. You can go get the Ben Gay, but if you ain't going to put the Ben Gay on the wound, it don't mean nothing. You can talk about the blood. But if you would like to give your life to the Lord, my enthusiasm is because it's late. Later than you think. Amen. I'm going to ask you to come forward. We ain't got no tricks. But you're going to have to make a decision. You come forward. You tired of eating from that tree? I'm going to help you today. Pastor, give me those blessed claws over there in that box. We're going to help you today. Hallelujah. This message was not for your entertainment. It was to get you to make a commitment. Come on. You got ministry in you. Help me with this cord. It's choking me. You got ministry in you. You got ministry in you. Thank you. Thank you. You got ministry in you. Your mama and grandmama and people told you you had some stuff in you. But this tree has become so big, it's growing right in the middle of your living room. Come on up here. Let me, let me, let me pray with you. You ain't sure about the ring? We're going to see if the ring fit. Put your hand in there. Put your hand in there. The ring fit, don't it? It fit. The ring fit. It, it was size just for you, baby. Stick your hand out. See if the ring fit. My God, the ring fit. Because he, he, he married, he want to be married to you. So we're going to talk to you about receiving Christ. If you need water baptism, we're going to do that too. Or plan to do that. But the ring fit. Amen. He wants to be engaged to you. He's chosen you above all the others. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. And the difference is when you say yes, man come and present a ring to you and say, would you be my bride? You got a choice to say yes or no. You got a choice. If you say no, he ain't going to stay there and wait for you. He going to go find him somebody else. It's willing 
to put the ring on. He may come back to you another time. Say, look here, baby. I really want you. And you say, no, he'll come again. I can tell you how many times he'll come. But I do know this, that he keeps coming. But the thing is, we never know when it's the last time that he's coming. Don't mean we're going to die tomorrow. Ain't nobody trying to scare you. Adam and Eve, he said, the day you eat of that fruit, you're going to die. And they didn't die for a while. But when he opens an opportunity, you need to trust him. He led you this far. You can't keep telling him no, baby. You hear me? You ready? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. And we're going to ask you to follow us in prayer. Repeat some things. Although being saved is more than repeating. I'm going to help you kind of say some words. If you don't believe them, they ain't going to work. It got to start in your heart. That you are sick and tired of this, this, this part of life. Because he chose you for this. And so if that's in your heart. And you believe that Jesus, that's the part I'm playing in this. Died for you on the cross. And you want forgiveness for your sin. Then you got to believe it. And you need to start right now. And you're going to need to confess that. Because it don't work if you don't say that Jesus is my Savior. Ain't no tricks about this. And then we baptize you for the remission of your sin. And then we rise to walk in the newness of life like Jesus got up out the grave. Amen. And as I stated, life ain't nothing more, children, of walking past trees Amen. and deciding which one you're going to eat from. Right. I don't care if it's my mama selling me some bit of goods. Mama, daddy, telling me how I don't help to serve. Daddy, because I only want to eat what my father has provided, That's and it's good. Right. Okay? So here, let's go. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask that you would wash me thoroughly by your blood. I come now in Jesus' name to present my body as a living sacrifice. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would receive me into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Now, here's what I want you to do. And y'all need to cooperate. I want you to go find three to five people and tell them, I received Jesus as my Savior today. Irregardless of what kind of response they give you, I want you to start in this church. Go, move, go, go. Say it with your mouth. Hey, y'all, if they don't say it, don't just hug them and tell them. You got to say it. As my Savior today. Go tell three to five people. Y'all need to be a little more encouraging. It's just that easy. I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior today. Hey, you got to say it. Let me hear you say it. Say it. Say it. I received Jesus. Now, who's sick? Just raise your hand. Who's sick? Who's sick? Just raise your hand. Who's sick? Who's sick? Who's sick? Who's sick? Who's sick? Who's sick? Who take medicine? Then you're sick. You're healed, but you're sick. Raise your hand. 
Now I want you to turn around to two to three people and say, I receive Jesus as my healing today. Two to three, move around. It don't work you just looking at people. I receive Jesus as my healing today. It don't work you just looking at people. Say it with your mouth. The confession makes it salvation. I receive Jesus as my healing today. The doctor just got me under watch care. That's all the doctor is. You ain't got to be. He just watch care. But it's God that know my real condition. I receive him my healing today. How many need a financial breakthrough? Come on. Oh, there we go. That a hands. Then say, I receive Jesus as my provider today. Tell somebody. Look somebody in the face. Jesus is providing all of my needs. It ain't my job, it's Jesus. He's my provider. Don't feel sorry for me because I'm single. I got a man. <laughs> I got a woman. I feel sorry for you. Don't. I feel sorry for you. I got a man. I got a woman. He's my everything. I got a ring to prove it. He see me when I get sick while he up there praying and he praying for my healing. He see me when I'm broke. He ain't up there judging me. He praying for my financial situation. I got a good man that's watching over me. He calling me. He texting me. He twittering me. He Instagramming me. His father say he can't come out the house yet, but he, con he contacted me, baby. Look at my phone. Some of y'all act like y'all men just went away and forgot all about it. He called me every day. How you doing, baby? Good. I hope you have a good day. Kisses, love. Go on to work. Enjoy. I talk to you when you get off. <laughs> He'll forgive you. Get a girl to ring. You change your ways, you can have the ring. He, that's it. There you go. He, 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 he's a loving God. He was thank you for that. You, you good now. Take that rain. But go and sin no more. Don't pawn it either. All right. God bless you. God bless you. The Bible says greet one another with a holy kiss, but we can't do it because COVID's still in the earth. But just mwah, throw some kisses. You dismiss in the name of the Lord. God bless you. We'll see you. Keep the Lord with you all day. Go tell somebody, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. Come here, Candy. Bless your heart. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Good seeing you. Hallelujah. Hey. He is risen. Three small words that brought the collective pace of humanity to an absolute standstill. He is that the anointing that's in this house is gonna go home with you. Did you hear me? Come here. Yeah, yes, most definitely. The anointing that's in this service is gonna go home with you. Go ahead. And that young lady right there. The anointing, how you doing? Good to see you. The anointing that's in this house, here, take it to her, whoever's left. There you go. It's in this service with you. How you doing? God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name. He is risen. Three small words that brought the collective pace of humanity to an absolute standstill. He is risen. Three words that shattered prisons. Words that shook the earth's foundations. Words that transformed a sense of utter despair into cries of pure joy and ecstasy. 
echoes of history's greatest triumph that still shape our reality. Even today, we're assaulted by constant distraction, countless sources waging war for our attention, yet three words pierce the noise. In our hunger for validation, our desperate pleas for love and attention, three words calm our anxieties. In a universe spinning at breakneck speed, its inhabitants locked in an existential crisis, three words proclaim the purpose of our existence. He is risen. Lay hold of this truth and embrace the peace within. Yesterday, fear reigned in our hearts. Yesterday, we sat in crippling darkness. Yesterday, we suffered abuse and all the accusations of a broken world. But today, our king, our healer, our defender is risen. And this reality doesn't merely accompany us on a meaningless journey. This changes everything. For you see, if he is risen, then all other pursuits become secondary. All of our failures become insignificant. All criticisms and condemnations become irrelevant. There is only His word, His mission, and His infinite, unconditional love for you. Because He is risen, we look to tomorrow. Tomorrow we will stop defining our worth through status and social media. Tomorrow we will together build an everlasting kingdom. Tomorrow and every day after, we will dance in the radiance of a redeeming Savior who crushed death and set us free. There is nothing that Jesus cannot overcome. We know this because He lives. We know this because He is risen.